On the one hand, when you don't have many international allies, you're reluctant to throw somebody like Assad over. And I think from their perspective, the West has not yet come up to, with a good answer to the question is what comes after Assad? And as they think through those possible scenarios, they can come up with several scenarios which are much worse both for the region but also for the potential concern that this could spread into Russia that are worse than Assad. I think there's also an aspect of here that's payback for Libya. Uh, a view in Moscow that the West took the resolution which Russia chose not to block in the UN Security Council two years ago and really stretched it in various ways to cover activities that the Russians considered went beyond the intent of the resolution. Uh, and also, this gets back to a, a, a bit of Russian paranoia, this, this very strong attachment to non-interference. Uh, and it gets back to what I find to be hard to see as a real concern, but I think the Russians see if that principle is weakened, does it someday get used against Russia? Is that an excuse for the West to intervene in Chechnya in a way that I think would be I inconceivable? The West would never think about that. But I think from what the Russians say, this is an issue that drives part of their policy with regards to Syria. And it's led them to take such an obstinate position, particularly in the UN Security Council, where to the extent that considerations are now being made in Washington, London, and Paris, and other capitals, you know, my guess is that everyone just assumes that the UN Security Council would be a fruitless exercise. So any action that's taken will be simply go around the Security Council.